All right, so what we're going to do today is make uh, audio stems of MIDI tracks, virtual instrument tracks, and some unconsolidated audio tracks. Um, and this is for about portability, um, being able to take a session to any studio, no matter what virtual instruments made the, the session, uh, just able to uh, transfer your projects wherever you're going. All right, so I'm going to jump right into it. Forgive me, still I haven't figured out why the uh, voice track is coming out of one ear, but you understand what I'm saying. All right, so just listen to this for a second. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is I'm going to turn off all of my effects. Um, so the biggest change, it's not going to sound very, is I'm going to take off this uh, filter. And I'm pressing command, command click. All right, so it doesn't really matter what's going on, but here we go. Just turning things off. I'm not going to turn the drums off. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to go ahead and just mute my aux input tracks, delay and reverb. Don't need them. I am going to turn off maxim on the uh, mix bus, on the stereo master fader, and I'm going to delete my fade because I just want everything as clean as it is. All right, so what stems are is they are printed audio files of virtual instrument tracks. So we need audio tracks for every... Um, track that we're using here and I have counted that and that's nine so I'm going to go ahead and make nine stereo audio tracks they're stereo because all of my tracks are stereo and I'm going to maintain that all right I'm going to make these a bit smaller so we can see them all and I want to have one for each track and just to keep things organized I like to have my source track and my destination track right next to each other so that things stay logical and coherent. Uh, so I'm deselecting tracks by clicking command and click. And I'm just dragging them down until I see that yellow line. Last one. All right. From here, I want to name these tracks. It is important to maintain naming. And I'm going to call these stem tracks because you can't have tracks with the same names. So, ladies and gents, stem. stem what else do we got guitar stem and then we have build stem all right so now we have all our destinations named um, I will go ahead and say that it's not the most um, not the easiest process to do in Pro Tools or I should say Pro Tools doesn't handle this in the easiest way. There are some other DAWs, DAWs where you can just export your stems, but here we are. Okay, so I also want to head over to my mix window, and I want to zero out all of my levels. And I'm doing that by clicking, hitting Option and clicking on these faders. And I just want to pass the audio through at Unity Gain at full volume. Um, just so what we have is what we have, and what we have is what we have. Um, at this point, 
go back to the edit window, and I'm going to just be careful, carefully. Um, going to go back, actually, I apologize, one mistake, forgive me, is now we actually have to tell our source tracks to feed into our destination tracks. We're going to do that through the I.O. All right, so remember that output one and two, or whatever yours might say built-in output, are going to our speakers, or in our specific case, to our headphones. And we're going to redirect that to a bus. And our first available bus, at least in my session, is 9 and 10. And that's because I have buses allocated to my aux inputs. So I'm going to set output 9 and 10, and then the corresponding destination audio track is going to become the input of that track is going to become bus 9 and 10. And I'm just going to keep going in sequence, 11, 12, 11, 12, 13, 14, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, now this is a bit arduous, but it's not that big of a deal. So anyone complaining can get over it pretty quickly. Let's see, 1920, input, 1920. All right, so now I'm ready to go back to my edit window. I'm going to go ahead and put all of my destination audio tracks into record ready. Okay, I don't want to put, you know, my original tracks into record ready. All right, that looks like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. At this point, I'm going to turn off my count off. Make sure I'm back at the beginning of the session. Record and
I heard a delay there. I don't know what. Oh, that was on the drums. Okay, so I realized that I actually wanted to explain a couple things that I didn't explain. Bad dad. Um, so, uh, I, I mentioned the change of sounds, right? So, for example, this um, original, actually I can now listen to the stems. This track here. Is not how I'm going to use. Um, it's not how I was using it. I was using it with this, um, with the air kill filter in, with only a low pass, creating that kind of bass tone. I probably could have left the filter on because that's how I want it. But I chose to turn off all of the effects because um, I want to leave it up to my mixing session, and I want to be able to go back and tweak effects a little bit more precisely um, or if I'm having someone do a remix it's really up to their vision what creative effects they want to use so that's why I turned off all the effects um, I changed the levels or I went back to change all these levels because the mix I had done was just a rough mix and I want these um, you know my audio files to be um, recorded at, at solid levels and if I have my volumes down they'll be they'll be quiet or, or loud or whatever so as we were listening there for that two minutes it became very clear to me that some mixing is definitely needed and that's not how, how I want the track to sound all right so we're done we have these these stems um, you can see over in the clip list that we have any track that I click on now has my stems I'm going to go ahead and kind of close out this session, actually, and make a new session just to kind of take us through that next step in this process. And I'm just going to call this test so that I can throw it out later. Um, I would now go and just import my audio tracks from Pigmeat. grab everything that has actually I can modify and have everything right there yeah. everything through 136 all right I'm going to copy them into this new session hit done have them go to the audio files folder I'm going to have these go to new track And basically, I'm ready to go. Always want to have your master fader ready to go. Start building your and gentlemen. Alright, so that's basically how you uh, print stems in Pro Tools. And now you're ready to go anywhere, import those audio files into any workstation, um, and get to work. Alright, there you go.